Hey, thanks for checking in. I'm heating up some white rice and pan frying some chicken breasts with half an avocado and drinking water with lemon. How was your day today? I'm so glad you're here. Now let's talk about a comic I've been reading. It starts out with boys hanging out in the house. They have been playing truth or dare. Now they ask another boy named James, truth or dare? James picks truth. The other boy then asks, what's the most scared you've ever been? We start with the game but end with something real, a creature. Something is killing the children. That's the name. It's set in Wisconsin. So many missing children. We need a monster hunter. Erica Slaughter and her octopus going to different towns to rid them of these creatures. The adults can't see them. Adults lose something that children's brains didn't. Even though there are ways to make yourself see them. A secret order that sends Erica Slaughter to kill the monsters. So adults can say, monsters aren't real. James Tynan IV and Vete de Ledra bring you this amazing story. James Tynan has worked with Boom Studios, DC, Image Comics, and more. And has written backups on Batman New 52 which are short stories in the back of another comic book. And has also done Amazing X-Men, number 13, Talon, Red Hood and the Outlaws, Batman Eternal, The Woods, Backstagers, Detective Comics, Justice League Dark, Mythology, Dark Knight's Metal, Constantine, Wind, The Closet, Department of Truth, Batman, which you introduce new characters like Punchline, Clown Hunter, and Ghostmaker. He also has written Sandman Universe, Nice House on the Lake. You can even exclusively read The Silver Coin and Blue Book on James Tynan's newsletter called The Empire of the Tiny Onion. James has written House of Slaughter, which is a spin-off of Something is killing the children. James Tynan talks about his first ever published work. James says, My first ever published comic was the backup in Batman number eight with Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo on the New 52. And that was the start of my whole career on DC. So getting to take on the driver's seat of the main Batman title is a culmination in itself. It was something I've wanted for a long time. I thought in various points that might not be a step that I get to because I've done so much in Gotham. But James did it all. 
and is considered one of DC's standout writers that has reshaped Gotham City. He says, I've been doing a lot of DC comics that's very larger than life. In Justice League, it's huge cosmic multiversal stakes. In Justice League Dark, it's deep magic and all this stuff. But there's a real power to the real world. The grounded real world that operates on the same rules that the one that we live in. It's also very freeing. If you go to the House of Heroes, the center of the multiverse in the DC universe, you need to explain a hundred things to understand the setting that you're in. But if you want to do a scene at the Applebee's, you can do a scene at the Applebee's and everyone understands. Okay, this is an Applebee's. There's a power in using the real world and then also bringing fantastic elements into it. It started with the title, Something is Killing the Children, which was a title of a completely different story that he wrote in college. And he said, Something is Killing the Children is the first thing I ever wrote. And it had nothing to do with the comic that exists today. It was a completely separate concept. I really wanted to find a story good enough for the title. The first time I tried pitching it to Boom Studios, it was in 2014. I had these elements. I knew a monster emerging in a small town and that it would be in upstate Wisconsin because I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin the northern woods of Wisconsin where a lot of the horror in my brain comes from. Every couple of years I would revisit it and add one more element. Then suddenly a few years later I came with the final element. Erica Slaughter, the monster hunter. I had an image of a small blonde woman who's on a bus eyes are sunken like she's been awake for days and days and days and there's a kind of haggard tiredness to her and she arrives and gets off this bus she's not decked out with a crazy sword or anything she just has a kid's backpack and a stuffed octopus inside of it and this bandana with these teeth on it and she's going to stop what's killing the children that's really where the story started coming together and started becoming what it is today this is a comic about how kids see the abstract horrors of the world as something that's more concrete and more solid than adults do Adults see all of the small and big ways that the world is wrong. They see it as all these individual different things. But kids understand the more basic truth that there is something out there that's going to hurt them and could kill them. And that is a real and active and present danger to their lives. And that is is the heart of the series. James says, Verte de Ledra, I think is doing the work of his career on this. Boom Studio set us together and he was actually the one who introduced the bandana to the concept of Erica. The second he drew her, it was like, yes, we made the right choice. He is the right person for this job. It was saying Vete's art. It was a page where he drew a gas station. This is the setting. This is the tone. And the addition of Miguel Muerto on colors for the series. The vibrant reds and blues that just brought it all to life. Vete de Ledra, the artist and co-creator, has worked with the Roman School of Comics and has done work on John Doe. 
Detective Dante. Dylan Dog. Got it. Loveless. X Force. Punisher War Journal. Amazing Spider Man family business. Something is killing the children. And House of Slaughter and many more. Verde talks about the character Erica was first inspired by Sampe Shirato's mangas, his beautiful mangas, called Kamui and Sasuki. And Verde talks about how he absolutely trusts and respects the work of the colorist. He speaks about being an artist, that the main things in comics is the narrative, but because the art is the first thing you see before you even read about the comic, you browse the pages to see the drawings. You've seen those drawings that Verde has done. You already understand what the situation is, what is happening. That means he has made it easier to read. James Tynan said, I used to think that horror was way too scary. As a kid, I had a lot of nightmares growing up. I didn't want to have nightmares, so I didn't want to watch scary movies or engage in scary things. Whenever I went to walk to my local blockbuster, I would kind of walk down the aisle of all the horror movies. I wouldn't look at them straight on. I would just look at them at the corner of my eye. I would imagine of what those stories were and they would scare the crap out of me. And then as I got a little older and became a teenager, I finally was like, you know what? I'm going to try a bit more horror. I started reading horror novels. That was my first way in because if this was too scary, I can put it down. I started horror movies. Where it was like, you know what? Some of these aren't actually so scary. But then I started watching even more horror movies. And I started realizing the things that I was coming up with in my head was scarier than the things that were actually in the movies. Me as a kid coming up with what I thought the movie Warlock was about. The cover was really scary. So I created this scary story in my head, in and around all of this. I started realizing that I wanted to write. It was in college that I realized I wanted to write the stories that I've been coming up with in my head. Actually try to capture that feeling of being afraid, especially as being a scared kid. James Tynan Works has won many Eisner Awards and I'm sure more on the way. From his tenacity and drawing out his experiences and putting it on the page, something is killing the children. Check it out.